Welcome back everybody. Today is going to be fun because I'm going to walk you through all of these machines are making some fireball products. It's going to be really fun to show you what we got going on in each machine. Here's all the boxes from Travis Pattern. These are all the castings from Spokane. So many projects to get done. It looks like we have some magic square castings and cast iron getting ready to be made. We got some more big castings in here that need to be machined. It's always like Christmas. New product coming soon. Can't show ya. Sorry. So let's get started right here. Today being machined on the VF4 are some blocks for the fireball tool welding table system. We got the Cobot putting it apart into the CNC machine. These are the blocks that are gonna become the fence blocks. These are one by two bar stock that have been cut to size in the bandsaw and then get placed on this grid pattern right here and the robot gets programmed to come grab the part and install it on the machine. A human could probably do this faster, but the robot is basically unmanned and you can just leave it alone and it's just gonna run parts all day long. So the robot puts the pallet in, air pressure locks it into place, pushes the part in, and the jaws clamp it in position. And then the jaws move over to the second pallet, grip it, remove it from the jaws. There's an air blower that blows off all the coolant on the part, finds all the nooks and crannies to remove all the yuckum on it. Any chips that could be lodged in the pallet get removed on this process. And then the robot swings around and this part is done. The robot puts the fence block down and it moves to another block to grab to start the cycle over again. These fence blocks are getting four drilled three quarter holes on the top. It gets machined to size, all top, sides and bottom, and then gets flipped over and drilled and tapped with a three quarter hole, all on this machine with nobody watching it. Only the robots doing all the work. It's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> this is the iPad that controls the robot. As you can see, there's 11 remaining parts to be made. And this is the grid pattern of where their locations of the parts are. So this is about a four minute cycle time and it takes about six minutes to make one of these parts. All these blocks have been machined and ready to go. They just need to be inspected. They need to be cleared of chips and then these will go to a coating. We'll probably black oxide these. So the machine right behind the robot is the VF6. And this one is getting ready to run the new square. Oh, it's this guy right here. It's called the Mutant Square. Hopefully this product should be ready by Fabtech this November. The more interesting thing is the fixture. So the operator's getting ready to set up the fixture that this new square is gonna be machined on. We got a big piece of plate steel that gets bolted down to the table. And then all these components are stops, clamps, and holders to be able to do this three operation. So it's gonna have one operation over here, a second operation here and a third operation right here. So this one's getting ready to run these new parts. This is kind of the starting of how a new product gets made on the milling machine. The next machine over, we're running some more parts for the fireball table and we're working on a little piece for the fixture table. Starts like that and ends here. So the first thing I do is I take uh, the finished part out. I move the second part all to the finished operation and then I'll take the piece that just got finished, the raw stock, the, the operation one, and I'll move it over to the second operation, and then I load my first operation raw stock. Okay, so you're moving them all down the line, and then you put a new piece of stock in. Exactly. So it's basically a 10 minute operation for one part, technically. Right. Okay. Three minutes per station. And so now I could do a 100% check on them. We'll check them about like halfway through. Just kind of uh, go over and make sure, or if I get like a broken tool or something comes up, right. then I'll go and, and double check. Okay. So this is supposed to go and it does it. So that's good. And this is uh, my through hole gauge. So that needs to go through. Yeah, this is my go gauge, this has to go through. So it goes through. Good fit. I'll check these threads right here. That goes in easy, goes in easy. If that one does go in, then it's no good. Then it's no the side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. 
The machine behind me, this one's another VF4 and it's running mega squares. And this machine runs mega squares all of the time. It never shuts off. It's continually making these things pretty much. We're taking the raw castings. The first operation is we machine the back and then it gets flipped over. The profile and the top gets machined and then it flips over one more time to make the cleanup pass on the first op. This is about a 10 minute operation to have a completed mega square. And then after the parts come off the CNC, they get deburred by hand and then they get in a pile on the floor and they get ready to be boxed up and shipped out. It's a beautiful, I love the surface finish. It's crazy that I used to make these in my garage at home. <laughs> The next machine over is another VF4 and it's making the new combination square, which I'm really excited for. You guys haven't seen it yet, but I'll give you a little sneak peek on what it looks like and how we make it. So what makes this tool really special is it's the largest combination square you can buy by far. It's heavy duty. It's got some really special trick features about it. So this is how the square starts off, a big chunk of cast iron, and we whittle it down to this. This takes about 25 minutes from start to finish. This is also a multi-stage fixture where it does one op, the machine moves to the second op, and then to a third op, and then all the parts get rotated down the line. What we're doing is that we're, we're gonna have to machine the outside profile, the two outside edges. We have a cutout inside here for the bubble level. We have a machining op down the center for the screw for your, the knob. We have a slitting saw operation for the blade. And then there's two adjustment screws right here that need to be drilled and tap. And those are for blade calibration, as you see here. So there's quite a few operations to get this tool made. And we're doing it with a four axis trunnion for a couple of those ops. After the part comes out of the CNC, it gets deburred by hand and then inspected also. So as far as I know, this is the first fully adjustable combination square where you can dial this thing in as accurate as you want. Behind the VF4 is the VF6, and this is the 50 taper machine, and it's running the heavy iron, and it's making these bad boys. These are the new fixtures for the fireball table. This is the 14 inch standoff block. A lot of holes to drill. A lot of slots to make, and that's what this bad boy's running at the moment. This is the little super lathe, and it's making some little fence pins. Basically, we have a blind hole and a tapped hole. And this is two inches tall, one by one bar stock. But this machine can just pump them out pretty quickly. We, I call it the stock plug. <laughs> so this one by one bar stock gets loaded up into this machine, and then it self feeds it. And it ends up on the other side of the machine, looking like this. How cool is that? So right next to the lathe is the Brother milling machine, and it's making these cool tooth blocks for the welding table. This is probably one of the hardest parts to make because of its complexity, but it's done right here on the Brother. And the Brother is pretty cool because it has a really high-speed spindle, has a very fast tool change, and it does a really good job machining these small parts that have a lot of intricate components. When you got a lot of tool changes, it can really speed up the process. It has a uh, fourth axis attached to it, and it just does a pretty good job. So what's happening is the, a lot of the 2D profile stuff has been done on another machine, and when we put it into the Brother, it's gonna put the teeth on it. So this is the same Brother as the printer. <laughs> well, that concludes our factory tour. Hopefully you guys enjoyed a little sneak peek behind the scenes of what goes on to make the Fireball Tools happen and everybody associated with it. I know I really enjoy sharing this content with you. Please leave your comments down below if you have any more special requests and I'll see you guys on the next one.